Well, good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, and members of the King family. I'll tell you, I'm standing right here with goosebumps. I cannot tell you how satisfying it is to be here in front of a great naval hero, the birthplace of Fleet Admiral Ernest King. And last night, when we had dinner together, and again, telling those stories, I was in awe, I was honored, and I was humbled. And this park, as the mayor said, represents a coming together of the community to pay tribute to one of Lorraine's sons who made such an amazing impact, not only on this nation, but the world, at a tumultuous time in the globe, when conflict, two wars, two major oceans, against all odds. And he was the critical, critical and pivotal point of leading us to victory. So this park would not have come together without many people helping. Black River Historical Society, the Charleston Village Society, the City of Lorraine, the Utilities Company, countless others. But probably most notably is the uh, one of the driving forces, and that is Miss uh, Lorraine Ritchie. Her, I'll dub her now Lady Lorraine. <laughs> Ernest King was an incredibly unique and dynamic leader because he was qualified and commanded surface ships, submarines, and aircraft. So he served on top of the water, under the water, and over the water. He was a triple threat. And he coupled his operational skills with education. He became a lifelong learner. He had an immense intellect, strategic thinking, and he was an ardent student of military history. But at the start of America's entry into World War II, President Roosevelt could not have picked a better leader for the job to craft and implement a strategy to fight and win a two-ocean war. Now, former Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, who was CNO during the 1970s, tried to characterize King as a combination of three individuals. That direct combat leader that served in the Civil War, Admiral David Farragut, he said, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. To the strategic intellect of Captain Alfred Thea Mahan and the irascible temperament of General George Patton. But this nation this Navy needed that hard-nosed strength of character, of leadership, and King brought it, and we won. Well, let me put it in some context here. During World War II, this nation put 18.2 million people in uniform when this country's population was about 150 million. In the Navy, we had 3.5 million people in uniform, in the Navy alone. And thousands of warships, transports, logistics, oilers, tankers, to fight a two-ocean war. You can't sit here. You're shaking my camera. We were fighting against a determined enemy. 
that had fully mobilized their countries to fight against us. Today we have 400,000 personnel in uniform in the United States Navy and 285 ships. We are fighting two wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Again, pales in comparison to the challenge that Fleet Admiral King underwent during those four years that he was the Chief of Naval Operations as well as the Chief Commander-in-Chief of the United States Fleet.